This is the Transformers Generations Studio Series number 65 from the movie Transformers Bumblebee. It is Voyager class Blitzwing. I picked up this figure from R Toys and a figure that I I don't know how to feel. Uh, the Photoshop images I've seen didn't really excite me on this figure, but I did like the character in the movie, so uh, I'm hoping this figure will not disappoint. Let's get him out of packaging. Here's Blitzwing out of packaging. As you can see, he's got a lot of details that are really accurate to how he looked like in the movie. Not super accurate, but we get a ton of really nice sculpted in really molded, really nicely molded uh, body parts and details for this figure. I really like him in this flight mode, in his flight pose. He's like, he's like chasing after Bumblebee. Very cool. Also in the background, you will see that there is a similar diorama. It is exactly the same one as the one we got from that Jeep Bumblebee, but they just blew it up and just made it a little bit bigger uh, for the Voyager class uh, box. So yeah, pretty cool. He's doing his flying, getting a flyby, running after Bumblebee. Okay, uh, at first glance, I honestly felt that the figure was too plain for some reason. I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I wished that they could have, I don't know, they could have put some more texture on the plastic, um, made it like an off-white eggshell type of plastic. I, I know it was gray in the movie, but it just feels unpainted. It just feels like the, the figure is incomplete. What's going for it is this really nice glossy finish on some of the pieces with the glossy red and the glossy gray bits. I love that. But the major plastic pieces that are done in this light beige or gray, beige, beige-ish gray type of plastic is a little, is a little off-putting, if I'm being honest. Um, I just wish they could have put some more texture on it. I don't know how. Maybe they put a wash on it just to make it look matte or powder coated, like, you know, like a powder coat type of paint uh, on, on on some cars and all that. Um, I, I, I don't know. But other than that, I think the figure is very true, very loyal to how he was depicted in the movie. Let's talk about his head sculpt. I think this is the best part of the figure, one of the more int uh, interesting parts. Uh, I wish the eyes could have been painted better. Uh, there are some overlapping red bits here and there. It's a nice choice of metallic red, but I wish they could have painted it better. The silver looks great, that amber yellow. I think it's a clear, clear plastic that they just painted with gunmetal gray, silver, and red. Not too bad, I actually like that. Turned out great overall. He's got this torso. Uh, amazingly, there's very little gaps. He is spindly. Because that's how he was in the movie. But there's, I was expecting a lot of gaps. They really did a nice compression on the transformation uh, with this figure into robot mode. So I, I like it. As far as accessories go, he has his blaster cannon, which you can mount here uh, on either hand, I think but don't push it on all the way because it is very tight, very difficult to remove. It's a nice looking cannon. Feels like when you mount it on his hand, it just this hand just transformed into his blaster. Very nice. He has this, well, his hand transforms into a, a blaster or a knife and you can swap it out right here. He do a karate chop. chop. <laughs> I'm kidding. So very nice. It's molded, but no paint. Um, I wish they could have done more with this one. Painted at least the fingers or something like that, but they didn't. Okay, this one's really nicely painted. Articulation for the figure. The wings can go, uh, can fold back and forward. Very nice. It's a nice uh, way to pose the figure. The shoulders are supposed to be connected to the wings like that so that they stay in place. But every time you move the shoulders because the, the shoulder joints are are tight. They're a swivel like this, go in and out. They they just love to pop off. And that's one of the things that really is annoying about this figure. It's so difficult to pose him when you're moving the shoulder. You gotta hold down that torso and then move the 
move the shoulder bits up and down. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows because of transformation, swivel wrist. Uh, the right hand has some finger articulation, which is really cool. So he can have, when he's flying, he can do, he can have an open hand, splayed hand like that. That's pretty cool. No waist articulation. Uh, this hinge joint right here is for the transformation, but it's locked in place. So sadly, no waist articulation. Hinge, uh, the hips can hinge out, forward and backward, thigh swivel, hinge knees, ankle rockers. Some toe articulation because of transformation. And this wing assembly, I mean, despite being such a good compression, really is annoying. It just loves to pop off. Okay. Uh, another comment on the paint. This one, I thought it was too cyberverse type of paint. They should have painted it metallic, uh, amber, and not this, I, I don't know, it's like a caution tape or caution school bus type of yellow which i don't know i don't like it this i mean there's a lot of places that have really nice paint apps like red and gray but then when you go to the beige and yellow it just it's just a little off-putting i don't know how to explain it okay the bombs are removable you can remove that uh, so we'll see more of him transform the wings properly get rid of the accessories and yeah it looks really nice the weapons can store neatly on his back if you choose not to have him holding it, which is actually pretty cool. And for some size comparisons, here is Blitzwing with the rest of the cast of the Transformers Bumblebee movie. And just so you have an even better idea of his scale, here he is with uh, Transformers the movie Voyager class Starscream. Uh, he does look a little bit smaller uh, compared to Starscream. I mean, they've shrunk. I didn't notice it, but they've actually been shrinking the figures, even in the Studio Series. I thought the Studio Series figures were actually very small already compared to the original uh, movie line figures that we've gotten. But over the years, as you can see Starscream over there, he's just beefy compared to Blitzwing right here. And now just one last thing I wanted to point out in robot mode before we go into transformation is... The figure is not a triple changer. Everybody knows that Blitzwing has always been a triple changer. It transforms into a tank, into a jet, and I was kind of hoping somewhere in the movie he would transform into a tank, but alas, he did not. Looking at the Generations Ramjet figure, there are actually a lot of similarities uh, with this figure and this figure in terms of aesthetic and color. And I'm honestly surprised they did not just call him Ramjet. I mean, he is clearly, color-wise, even aesthetics, even the missiles, the rockets on him, he is clearly Ramjet. I don't know why the director went with Blitzwing. One of the little things you nitpick about the movie. But if you look at the colors, red, gray, black, and off-white, beige, gray, he could easily pass as a movie-verse Ramjet. So transformation, get rid of the weapons here, as well as the ramjet rockets. Okay, uh, first thing you wanna do, you wanna close up the fist and face the palms upwards like that. Okay, all right, and fold them out like this. These are gonna fold like this later on. Okay, and then the feet, they are going to rotate 180 degrees. Actually, the thighs, like this. Move them apart like this. Okay, and at this point, you want to go ahead and fold these out. Like this, and these, like this. Fold out that inner leg, like that. Fold the landing gear, like this. Okay, and then... Okay, fold the tail fins out and then join the two leg pieces together. On my copy of the figure, as always, there's some quality issues. This peg was a little on the thick side and I had to shave it off with a box cutter. Shave off this side, just scrape that off just so it would fit nice and flush. 
it's not completely a good fit. It's still there's still a gap, but that this is uh, much better than before I did it. Before I did it, it was just like that. That's how crazy quality issue quality control on this figure is. So okay, and with that, what you want to do is you want to detach this piece right here. And go ahead and fold it down like that. Fold this flap out, and just straighten that whole. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's never happened before. No worries. Okay. Just it's supposed to stay just like that. Don't worry about it. You're gonna tab this whole section right here. So just keep it like that. Okay. There we go. Okay, fold these wings out like that. Okay, and then here, what you want to do is just back up. I'm gonna lift this up like this and clear that. Wait, you wanna fold the head down like that. Just get it out of the way, and then this whole assembly right here is gonna fold all the way down here, and these tabs are gonna peg in right there, and then these peg holes are gonna, those pegs are gonna tab in and lock that wing assembly in place. So yes, you got a fall cockpit right here. And like I said, they should have painted this one in a metallic finish, it would have been better. Okay, and then tab right here, okay. Nice and tight, okay. We'll do the nose cone last. This is probably, now we come to a point which is probably the most difficult uh, transformation and it's you fold the arms right here and then these panels these rectangular panels right here they're gonna slot in here I know it sounds difficult and it actually is but there's a trick to it okay the best way I've seen the best way I've tried at least to do it is wait let me just straighten it out so everything's flush okay make sure it's 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 parallel the best way I know is you fold Okay, you fold the forearm up to his bicep, like here, and then you, you sort of twist, okay? Sort of twist it like this. Fold it like that, and then you press it on, okay? Because if you try and, okay, just press it. If you try and fold it all the way right here and just lining up these panels, it's going to be very difficult to do. Like the first time I did it, I was like, oh, God, where, how, how do you do this? It's just, okay, it, uh, it just doesn't work, right? So the best way I know is you try and scoot it right here, fold up this shoulder hinge right here, and then once you've, you've lined that up, you can fold it upwards like that. And that, for me, I think is the easiest way to do it, okay? That that's I've tried several times several times to do it. That that for me is the best way to do it. Okay, all right. Uh, just make sure this neck is folded in, okay, like that. And then what you want to do is this nose cone right here. That hole right there is going to peg through this peg. Now, interesting to note, this peg also wasn't as smooth as I wanted to be. Quality issues, there was some scuffing right here. There was uh, extra pieces of plastic right there. I had to scrape that off with a box cutter as well. And because I've done that, now you can easily plug that in. But before I could not plug it in, it was just too thick. It would not insert into the hole, but now it, it's fine. So just plug that in like that. And there you go. Now the instructions tell you to rotate the entire cockpit assembly anti-clockwise, counterclockwise but it doesn't. It doesn't move counterclockwise. You have to rotate it clockwise. If you wrote it, you want to bring it back, just keep rotating it in one direction. There is absolutely no way to rotate it back. So don't try and break the toy by rotating it like what the instructions tell you to do so. The best way to do it is clockwise like that, and then like that, bring it back and transform to jet mode that way. So very nice. Okay, so this is it. This is the bear jet mode. It looks like it, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's not my favorite jet mode. It looked a lot better in the movie for some reason. Uh, I, I don't know why it's not giving me a, a really nice vibe in jet mode. 
You can attach the missiles right here. Right here. Okay. The fist, blade, gun, blaster, knife is going to stick right here. Either or is fine. And then the main gun, you just tab it onto that tab right there. Okay. And get the landing gear out. So, yeah. and for some size comparisons, here he is with Transformers the Movie Voyager class Starscream. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good size, actually. Albeit this one just feels chunkier and bigger, but when they both go into alt mode, they're actually in scale, pretty much. In fact, this one is actually, it feels like it's in a much bigger scale. Because you look at the cockpit, there's a much bigger person that can fit right in here than here. So... You know, are they in scale? Probably. And so some final thoughts on Studio Series Blitzwing. Uh, I wasn't completely blown away. I knew uh, there was something wrong with the, the figure. When I saw photoshopped images of it online. Uh, going back to the paint apps and the color scheme, I honestly think they could have done better. I think they could have improved on the gray beige plastic. Uh, it was just a little too lackluster for me. Transformation was incredibly painstakingly difficult. It's It wasn't enjoyable. And that, I think, is a lot of what's going on with the Studio Series figures. A lot of Studio Ser Series figures are just not a lot of fun to transform. Uh, they're already bordering on masterpiece kind of irritating transformation. In mass retail, I get it, but... I, I, the, the transformation for this figure just leaves a lot to be desired. Robot mode is great. Jet mode is okay. I have no big issues with them. Just the transformation. Overall playability is just not doing it for me. I think I, I like the transformation of the Starscream figure. This figure is a lot of fun compared to this figure. This figure is like a one-time transformation, maybe two-time transformation. You keep it either in jet or in robot mode. It's a shame because I had a lot of... Uh, expectations with this figure and um, sadly it's it's disappointed me figures gonna get a 7 out of 10 for me best of luck to everybody hunting this figure down it is packed in a case with skipjack and a lot of people I know I'll be gunning for the Blitzwing figure. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little video review. If you did, please let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you think of this Studio Series Blitzwing. Should it have been called Ramjet? Is it something you still want to hunt for or is it a pass for you? Hit me up in the comment section. And as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. If it's your first time here, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. That hole right there is going to peg through this peg. Now, 